Can a tiny off-grid system actually cook food like this? Here's a high-tech survival scenario. The power is out, there's a bad storm, and I want some hot food. I have two 20 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries and an inverter. What are the maximum capabilities of such a compact setup? Is cooking even possible? In this video I'm going to push 20 amp hour sample batteries past their limits and see what happens. The batteries are DR Prepare 20 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate or LIFEPO4. They have a 10 year warranty and a 4000 cycle rating. Please note they were provided by the manufacturer in exchange for reviewing them. This battery is suitable for small-scale off-grid solar power systems and many 12-volt applications. But is asking them to cook food asking a bit too much? Well, I want to see if these batteries can really work and what they can actually do. So let's unbox them and do some real-world testing. I noticed a label on top of the battery clearly showing the support contact and the battery serial number in case there's a problem. It appears the company wants to make sure their customers can contact support, which is a good thing. And there's an instruction manual showing how to set up the batteries and basic specifications. This is the inverter used in the test. It's 1000 watts. Now the DR Prepare 20 amp hour battery is officially rated at 20 amps of continuous discharge. I put two in parallel, so that's 40 amps. Cooking with batteries usually takes a lot of power. My smallest cooktop uses over 49 amps at 12.4 volts, or about 607 watts. This exceeds the rating of the batteries by 18%. I don't know if that's going to be a problem, but we'll find out. First, I charge the batteries up. Here you can see one of my 100 watt solar panels in action. This is a really small and basic setup, but in an emergency that might be all you have. So the question is, what can you actually do with it? One of my main interests is in cooking food off of solar because hot food, hot drinks, and even hot water can be one of the biggest morale boosters during an extended emergency situation. For the first test, I set up the DR Prepare batteries in parallel in the kitchen and connected my inverter. The batteries were not connected to a charger at this time. I plugged in my smallest cooktop and turned it on. I really did not expect the batteries to handle this load, but to my surprise, they did. The cooktop heated right up, so we started by scrambling an egg. A family member did the cooking while I watched over the batteries and handled the camera. The batteries dropped to about 12 and a half volts when the cooktop was cycling on. I personally prefer cooking on cast iron, but this was just a test, so we used a nonstick pan. It's amazing that two tiny little batteries are doing this. As you can see, the egg turned out well. The voltage stayed right around 12.3 to 12.4 volts under load. 49 amps exceeds the official rating in the specifications by about 18%. The voltage is dropping to about 12.3 volts under load, but there is still plenty of power left for cooking. Actually, this test was going a lot better than I thought, so I decided to throw in a piece of bread and make some toast. I kept turning the cooktop temperature up higher and higher to see what would happen. At this point, we had been cooking about 15 to 20 minutes, and things seemed to be going pretty well. Well, so far the DR Prepare batteries are standing up to the abuse, so I decided to keep going and cook some apples. I do not recommend exceeding the 20 amp rating shown in the manual and in the specifications, but in an emergency you might have no choice. At this point I had the cooktop turned on almost as high as it would go. The pan is actually cast iron, but it heated up just fine, it only took a few minutes. When the cooktop cycled off, the voltage rose to right around 13 volts. I had to use an extension cord, and I'm just showing that cord so you can see that it's plugged into the inverter and not the wall. Clearly, with the right equipment and the right setup, even a small set of batteries can cook food. The most important thing is to know what kind of equipment you have, how much power it draws, and whether it really works. If you don't test it, you won't know. 
A really small setup like this could be a godsend in an emergency or in a storm. It has its limits, but can certainly reduce your dependency or need for cooking fuel. If you don't have one of those solar generators and you have a couple of batteries and an inverter, you can pretty much do the same thing that's shown here. So this was literally the very first test I did with these batteries and I was pretty impressed. They're very small and pushing them past their limits and they don't seem to mind. So what else can I do with them? There was plenty of power left for cooking. I probably didn't even use half the power that was in them. Almost ready to eat. And I'm already thinking about the next test. Funny thing, this is a very simple meal but I didn't expect to get this far. So after seeing that I decided to push a little more and see what else I could do. After putting the batteries through all of that, it seems rather too much to ask it to run a coffee percolator, but that's exactly what I did. This method of making coffee is probably a little on the slow side and it's not exactly efficient, but let's give it a try anyway. At some points during the test, the inverter was drawing more than 50 amps. I noticed the batteries are getting a little bit warm during this test, which is normal for such a high C discharge rate. Making the coffee took as long or longer than cooking all the food did. It's really not a fast process, but it's a good way to test the system. Just to be clear here, I don't necessarily want to abuse the DR Prepare batteries, but I also want to test them in an emergency situation. And in an emergency, you might not be too concerned that batteries are getting a little warm and you're being a little hard on them because you don't have any way to cook food and it's an emergency. I actually did not expect to be able to cook this much food off such small batteries. I figured maybe I would get one thing done and that would be it. What this shows is that with a simple setup of a couple of lithium batteries and an inverter, you can actually be quite well prepared for emergencies if you know how to use the equipment properly and you know its limitations. My thoughts so far. DR Prepare offers emergency, readiness, and outdoor gear. Clearly even a small lithium battery bank can be a building block in a readiness strategy. And that's exactly what I'm using these batteries for. Cooking is at the upper end of what the sample batteries achieved. Running lights, Wi-Fi, internet modem, heated blanket, or charging phones would be child's play for them. After seeing how the two DR Prepare 20 amp hour batteries performed, I don't hesitate to recommend them. I don't get paid for selling them, but if you're interested, there's a purchase link in the description. I wish to thank DR Prepare for providing the sample batteries in this demonstration. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.